Welcome to a continuation of Political Thursday. I'm Linda Ogutu. So for the next one hour, we're looking at um, what has been happening in the country politically. And like I mentioned before, the biggest conversation that is uh, across the country is the printing of ballot papers um, with allegations uh, being made from both political divides. So allow me to have a conversation with two gentlemen in studio. They will set the stage for a different conversation I'll be having with a different panel um, after we get to hear from them. So I have Dr. Tiendi Amolo, he's a former ombudsman and an aspirant member of parliament for Rarieda, but we're also speaking to him in his capacity tonight as a lawyer, and he also represented NASA in a meeting that was called today in the morning uh, by IEBC. We also have uh, David Murade, he's the deputy chair of Jubilee Party. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us uh, tonight on Political Thursday. Uh, Mr. Murade, allow me to begin with you, because we had uh, from Otiendi Amolo just before you came in, and we were asking him what he, he had in the meeting that was had today um, by IEBC and presidential candidates, and he says um, they raised their concern, and probably the, the point at which you're supposed to begin this conversation is uh, Chebukat is saying they do not have enough time, they cannot uh, cancel this tender. What are your thoughts? I go by the views of uh, the IEBC because they're the ones with the timelines and they're the ones who are pacing themselves. We have a constitutional deadline of the 8th of August. We are not about to change that date unless you change the constitution. So as long as the constitution says the election shall be held on the first Tuesday, in the fifth year after the first general election, it's cast in stone. So unless they have uh, any reason that could delay, because we actually believe these whole shenanigans are about trying to avoid the election on the 8th of August. You think the tactics to delay the election? They've never wanted to have this election. And it's obvious, and the reasons are clear. Mm. They know the numbers. You know, Linda, <laughs> everybody by now yeah. knows the numbers. It's a numbers game. It's not rocket science. We know our numbers, they know their numbers. In 2013, we beat them by 850,000, let alone the 8,000 they talk about, the 50 plus one. They are neither national nor super because they're a conglomeration of different parties. It's actually ODM. Then you have WIPA. Then you have ANC. And you have Fort Kenya. In fact, in the Fort Kenya territory they are running, somebody against Weta. Mm. You're now telling me they are national alliance? Okay, forget the national. Super but, uh, is not. Because if you look at the numbers of 2013, all the votes that were cast against Uhuru, including Musalim, whatever these numbers, were counted with Ryla. That's the 50 plus one. So what more are they adding? Have you seen Isaac on the uh, campaign trail? The guy is firefighting in Bomet. I don't know what value he will add to the uh, so-called super alliance. Okay, let's move away from the super alliance and focus on some of the concerns that, were, that are now being raised by the right. NASA uh, uh, principals and right. specifically the flag bearer Ryla Odinga right. um, on their wording of this particular uh, tender right. to al right. What are your thoughts? Has Does been, he have genuine concerns? He has been hobnobbing with those South African companies that competed for the tender with Augure. He's been there twice. They were actually competitors for the award of the tender. Now, Raila has this habit of throwing stuff into the air, and when you ask him to substantiate, he runs away from it. The last one was the Eurobond. He was invited by the EACC. He refused. He was invited by Parliament. He refused. He was asked to substantiate or give, present any evidence. He couldn't. Mm. And every time he goes on a campaign rally, he talks about Eurobond. The other one was the SGR. He knows for a fact. They signed the 220 and they added the 107 for uh, stock, the locomotives, the compensation. He did it himself with Kebaki. Okay. Now he's talking about SGR being loaded by the Jubilee administration. So you don't no, think... I think the media has a problem. Why does because the media you have a never problem? ask 
these people to provide evidence. You never ask them to give the facts. In fact, we are having something called a fact checker. And I like KTN. Every Sunday, they bring a fact checker. Yeah, we look at so all that the when somebody issues something outrageous, mm -hmm. we look at the facts and for the facts. Mr. Murade, so what you're saying is you don't think the concerns that are being raised are genuine? They are not genuine, my friend. If somebody says somebody went to somebody's house, all right? These days, Linda, we have CCTV in our homes. You give us the date, we will run for you. Those things are not erasable. Mm. They are recorded 24-7. Okay. We can give you for a month, all right, okay. for that house. Tell us the date and the time, and we'll run for you those tapes. All right, so I was giving you time to catch up with Otiende because he was here before you. Otiende, what are, what are your thoughts? Because the conversation I had with you before, yes. you said there was a consensus today that there is a problem, um, credibility issue. There was no consensus. I spoke to Rafael Tuju, who represented the Jubilee Party. My brief is, there was no consensus. Okay, he's here, he's here. Well, uh, first of all, thank you. I'm happy David Murade is here. He's usually been my friend. And so, first of all, he did not attend the meeting. Yeah. So I speak because I attended the meeting. I'm he says brief. he was told. Yes. So he's in no position to contradict what I say unless whoever told him was here. Um, and, right. But as I indicated earlier, uh, at the end of the meeting, there was, I said, preponderance of opinion. The majority were of that opinion, and it was summarized by Dr. Ikuro Alcott, mm -hmm. who you can call any time, who spoke last in terms of the presidential uh, representatives. But I think what's more important is that listening to David Murade, I have listened to the last, the conversation on this matter the last two days, and I find it very interesting. First, when uh, Raila Odinga brought out that issue, the first reaction was, leave IBC to do its job. When then pictures emerged and dates and all, then the conversation changed. The conversation was that, give us the hard evidence. Give us the evidence, not just of association, but of what I think the ABC called improper association. Then the conversation has now changed to two things that I've, one I've heard from him and one I saw the president saying, that we do not want elections on 8th of August. I wrote the constitution, mm. and I can tell you yeah. that we want the elections on August. And it is not that it is cast in stone. The elections will be had. There are circumstances when it can be postponed. But that is not what we are asking for. No one is asking for postponement so are you, of elections. Are you, I've heard from NASA core principals and they're saying you need to cancel this tender. Are you willing to negotiate on that? But at precisely the point. The, this is the scenario. Facts emerge that show that one of the key players has had contacts with the entity that is supposed to print the ballot papers mm. and it has been demonstrated both within the country and outside the country so that is basically the IBC to... then calls a meeting and our expectation is not that they are going to ask us repeat what you said our expectation is they're going to do two things one to say we have commenced our own investigation to the extent to which our staff may have been involved mm. and the second would be that on account of what has been raised this and this and this is what we intend to do but in the meeting today that's not what they did. They gave us a pre-written uh, document, eight pages, in which they outlined all that they've done towards the elections. And the person who prepared that document mm. is Immaculate Kasait, who also distributed it, who is one of those who was mentioned adversely. Mm. Linda, and the person Murad with the chair I think, was the, I think, the CEO. I think, uh, so the point is this. Let me just make, okay. and then we finish. Okay. The point is, when you have raised concerns, legitimate concerns, then it is not for you to be taken through a whole document saying everything else except what you raised. Mm -hmm. They only address so that in one paragraph. So there is everything except what you raised. In one paragraph, paragraph 13, in one line. And they said that we do not have evidence to show any improper contact between the printer and any of the players. As simply as that. That is dismissive when that is the reason why you are getting the Is that dismissive? I, it is. I right. think, Linda, facts are facts and facts are sacred. Mm. Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry today issued a statement to the extent that the so-called Augurea that appeared as head of the chamber that visited State House is not the it's same, same. Augurea printing the ballots. So pictures which they're taking out is a fraud. Number two, 
it was clear from that statement that there was no meeting outside the formal meeting where the Chamber of Commerce of Kenya, led by Kiprono Kitoni, and the Chamber from Dubai. And they said even the issues they discussed about the airline having rights to come to Mombasa, mm. about business. There was never an issue about the ballot papers. Now, when you cast aspersions about an institution like the IABC, you better have some very hard, solid evidence. These are the same guys who appointed the Hassan-led IABC. And because the Hassan-led IBC and Oswago did not deliver the election to them in 2013, mm. they clamored for their removal. We What's agreed. Yes. We removed them. And Legally Linda, let speaking. me say this now. Yeah. Government, and I'm not in government, I am retired. <laughs> government has been bending over twice. And I think people are taking advantage. The other day the president was on record saying if this is what it will take, that this country is peaceful, that people do not die, I'm going to apply the Solomonic wisdom okay. and say this baby can be taken by NASA rather than have this country burn up in flames. These guys have said it on record. They are not going to go to court in the event that they lose. What are they telling Kenyans? What will they do? What will they resort to? Mm -hmm. They will resort to violence. These people are forgetting one thing. The 2007 violence was spontaneous because nobody was prepared no, for it. Let's go back to the conversation. Right now, yeah. that cannot happen. And by the way, nobody has a monopoly of violence. The only people who have a monopoly of violence right, is listen. the state. Otiende. What I love about this conversation is that Mr. David Murad is talking about everything except what we are supposed to discuss. Which is? Which is the ballot box tender. Mm -hmm. You see? Taking us to all those stories will not aid. And for me, the way I followed this conversation, it is quite disturbing. And l let me tell you, first of all, if the position of the president, the deputy president, and Tuju when he came there today, right. and I assume your position, is that you do not care who's awarded this tender, then if there's a legitimate player, who cares? Then why should you have a problem? We have even said we that, can give it to no, Spectre International. Mr. Murade, can I finish? Because we're not quarreling. We are not. Yeah, we're so just having a finish. conversation. So my point is that but if la, you do but, not care about like, it, yes, we do. Uh -huh. and then, because you've said that you do not care who no, no, gets no, no. it, but Your then there's a, player, there's a player who's able to demonstrate mm. that the particular person who's been awarded yes. is raising legitimate questions in terms of legitimacy and credibility. Mr. Brother, then, do you but care? it has been then, established that it, it is not the same person. Linda, I need to finish. Because okay. we need to protect she asked me whether I care. And I'm finish, saying this, uh, my okay, friend. No, no, I was with you in campus. And you were given the power to read. Let me finish. Let him finish. Yes. Let okay. him finish. My first point is, yeah. if you do not care whoever gets the contract, right. then if some of the players legitimately care right. and have raised the concern, mm. you should have no problem with any process, therefore, that removes that player and brings another one with whom anybody has no issue. That's yes, number one. I agree. Number two is this. Right. It cannot be that a point of legitimacy has been raised and credibility of the printer, right. and the primary entity that should deal with it is IBC. But instead of IBC dealing with it, you are bringing all sorts of other shadowy figures that the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce has issued. They are not IBC. Mm. They are not appointed. They are not even public officials. Okay. Linda, you Linda, Linda, I, I think to be fair, yes. I had earlier been point. informed just, just that you had point. even invited IBC, yes. that yes. they would have been part of this mm. conversation. Mm. Mm. I want him to tell us what legitimacy issues have been raised about that printer who has conducted all the by-elections have been ordered from there because he legitimately I'm happy to won respond. the tender yeah. for printing ballots. All the by-elections, most of which were won by ODM, for, by the First way, of all, do you have a problem with any other person being given this tender? We do not have a problem, but if due process was followed, yes. and these guys won, and uh, when it was challenged in court, the courts decided IABC should go ahead and use any other method of award. And, and they, they decided still to do direct the based on the previous uh, competitive bidding, which Augure had won. Let, okay. me, let me educate my friend here, because all that he has said is not even factually true. Mm. First of all, the courts have never allowed IBC mm -hmm. to do anything like use any process. The pro procedure is this. Algurea was awarded this contract. Right. It was challenged before the Public Procurement uh, Review Board. PPOA. 
the public procurement review board chaired by Paul Gisheru, who is a sympathizer and of uh -huh. course a supporter, against whom an ICC warrant is still outstanding, decided there was no problem with it. Then it was challenged in court. The court decided that award was improper. Mm -hmm. What did the PPR say? Paul Gisheru told IBC to ignore the court order. Of course, IB did not ignore the court order. It went on appeal. IBC later withdrew its appeal. But this same company, Algurar, also filed an appeal to challenge the high court order, which had cancelled their tender. Their own appeal failed. Mm -hmm. So as we speak, in terms of court record, there's only an order cancelling the Algurar tender. There's an appeal by Algurar which was dismissed. There is no court order so allowing what Algurar. Basis so were they me, awarded? No, let me explain. Let me explain. That is part of the problem. Okay. I think if you understood us, you will actually agree with us. They were not awarded because there was any due process. Right. After the high court, the court process ended, the court said that you must restart the process. Mm -hmm. IBC then went for what we call restricted tenders. Yes. They invited 13 farms right. to bid. As they were looking at the bids of the 13 farms, right. then somebody went to the same public procurement review board of Paul Gisheru, which then said that IBC cannot even finish that process mm. and to directed them to abandon that process and use any other method. That's what you are calling a court order, not a court order. The same Paul Gisheru. Yeah, the powers of who the court. Who then said, no, no, who then said, directed, basically directed the IBC to abandon that process and go for direct. That's how Al Gurai uh, ended up. Now, mm. the issue is this. Mm. If there's one entity that should not get it, I don't care about any other. It's Al Why? Yeah. Because there's an existing court order that cancelled the award. Yes. Their own appeal was dismissed. Okay. So listening to you, uh, Dr. Ari, so any other company can do this except Al -Gurea. Absolutely. Our point was this, and to answer him also. First of all, bringing and alleging that Raila has an association with another firm who he wants to, is neither factual. here nor there. It's factual. The point is, okay. the only entity that was awarded yeah. is an entity that has been shown to have an so, association. No, so no, any no, no. other... So, the so, facts so, are sacred. So, I keep going so, back to that one because so. my friend here is honest. Remember Moses Kuria mm -hmm. saying how he met with Orengo mm -hmm. and some South African companies at uh, Kempinski and how Orengo asked him to support that company okay. to supply the ballot papers. That's the company we are talking about. Okay. I want him to tell us on what basis the IBC, because all these institutions are independent, including the PPOA, Public uh, Oversight Authority. It has actually got more jurisdiction than the courts in matters procurement, and that is why they are called the review board. So they review all the facts. We have 53 days to go. The Great. process of retendering would take a minimum of, I don't know, Dr. Like Ari here says any other firm days. can do this except Al -Gurea. But the preparedness and the readiness, you see, we think they're putting the uh, spikes in the works ah. with a view to making sure that the IBC is not ready to conduct this election. Mm. We firmly believe, mm. and we have said to them, we will take all of you, including Jubilee, NASA people, they can sit there for the printing, for the packing, <laughs> for the, the delivery, that. sealed, to come for the election. Okay. And we are happy to do it, Linda. including with the L UN Finally. Uh -huh. With the UN, no, no, let That's me fine. finish, I gave you space. Yes. Including the EU, observers, everybody can go, what is printing? Printing, you can even do it at... Uh, so you think that would You can do it problem? even in an uh, industrial area. Two quick responses. What we are talking about here, what are they claiming? That this is a company... That, that is associated because it's with cozy cozy with the leadership of a jubilee would actually do some extra on the side ballot and we're saying there are ways to check that that does not happen mm. and we are happy to invite him to go to dubai and uh, sit there and supervise the printing i want the you parking. to note the words okay. of my friend here Final when words. he says we yeah. have invited them to come and witness the present we can take them to Dubai. Do you realize those are the wordings of IBC? Of IBC. And that's the point we are making. I'm saying as that Kenyans, Jubilee Kenyans, and IBC are one on this, and that's the problem. Jubilee, the I'm not saying point. IBC. But you, you do realize Kenyans, that an offer that was yes, given by Kenyans IBC. Kenyans are happy to go that extra <laughs> now, mile. could I finish? Uh, that was just my first point. Mm. That wording betrays our up. concern. Yeah. Our, the second point is... So what is wrong with that the, thing the, being the very, done the under very supervision? The very second point, and which is very simple, 
and it needs to be clear. There is nothing like wanting to postpone the elections. There is nothing like wanting to share government. In the current constitution, uh -huh. you do not share government uh -huh. merely because the elections are not held. Linda, it is very clear. I'm so sorry. So These are guys who are even creating positions that don't exist. Prime okay. ministers, Gentlemen. I don't know, whatever. And they are telling you that the government cannot be shut. They forced it. In 2007, post-election violence, they forced a okay, coalition government. Okay, I need to wrap this up. I need to wrap now this up. Now they want us to run out of time so that they can force us to share really government with them because up. they realize there's no other way. To wrap up, they can never come my last government. word on this. Last one. The very last word. Jubilee and IBC need to focus on the issue that is raised. Not all going around the world like my friend is doing okay. to camouflage all right. it. Why are you always fighting these institutions <laughs> and you are the architects of these institutions? <laughs> Why can't you trust any institution okay. as long as it's not doing your bidding? Dr. Otiende Amolo, former ombudsman and aspirant uh, member of parliament in Rueda. Tonight we were speaking to him in his capacity as a lawyer and uh, the man who he was among the individuals who represented NASA at a meeting that was held today by IEBC. And we also had uh, David Murad, he's the deputy chair, Jubilee Party. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Probably this is a conversation we need to have. And uh, I'm telling him he's very lucky because he's now hired by NASA. See you in court. If you go on uh, besmatching people's names, then character assassination, uh, mm. see you in court. Okay, well, people, listen. <laughs> we are changing this panel and we're having a different panel to talk about a lot of things that have happened in the country during this week. You need to stay with um, KTN News. We'll be back in a bit.